Hey friends, Sheree here. Today I'm back to share with you all the completion of the second half square triangle quilt. Uh, in part one, our last video, we worked on this quilt as well as another one using charm squares. This one is using the 10 inch layer cakes and now it's time to uh, decide on the layout and get these squares sewn together to complete the quilt top. I shared the layout that I was going to use for this quilt in part one of the video, which I will link in the I cards above as well as in the description box. And now we're gonna go on and start sewing it. All right, so I just wanna show you the simple piecing uh, really quickly uh, on this big quilt. Uh, so this is my this is my row one to be the seam that I sew straight down here. Now what I'm going to do to try to get great little points here at my triangles is I'm gonna match that seam up first and I'm going to pin that side. And then I'll come up here and put a pin in the top. And as I said, I'm just gonna sew from top to bottom. I'm gonna sew a straight line a quarter of an inch in from the raw edge. As I explained in part one of this video series, I have my uh, foot attachment on, quarter inch uh, seam foot attachment on, so that's what I'm using as my guide. Most uh, sewing machine throat plates will have, you know, kind of a ruler uh, marking on there, and if not, you can create your own marking by lining up where a quarter inch is from your needle position and laying down a piece of masking tape and use that tape basically to line your raw edge up, and then you'll know that your needle We'll stitch right at the quarter inch mark okay so i'm gonna make four of these two block units and basically i just went across my row flipping uh one piece onto the other and again gonna be lining up my uh corners starting with where my triangles will join so that i get nice points and then I'm just going to proceed with the next four with the other two blocks the same thing and then I'll be back to show you what they look like sewn together and then how to do the final step of joining to get to create your rows all right so here is the final um, basically on the opposite side of that row here's that sewn together and you look here when you carefully pin let's zoom in it's not going to be well some people are actually phenomenally perfect <laughs> with their patchwork piecing uh you know i'm not at that level uh, <laughs> uh but that's that's pretty good that's not something that i would be all you know upset about and go in and take it apart and redo it if my points are way off i will go ahead with the seam ripper and um you know take the stitches out and realign it and mainly i mean just for aesthetic reasons, when you do the quilting, I mean, a little bit off, you don't see it much, but it's really for me so that when I join the rows, things are lining up and I don't end up with this like one corner that's like, you know, way off or something like that. Um, so you do want to, I think, take your time and try to get your points um, as nice as possible, okay? So there's one. Then the other three sections I joined together just like that. So here's the next section. These two were joined. This one was joined to that. This one was joined to this one. And this is my far right edge, okay? After joining the two block segments together, then I add them together um, to create my long strip. So I took my first section of two and laid it on top of the next section. And again, I'm constantly looking back at the photo that I took of my layout to make sure because these are prints making sure that i'm relaying it out the way i want to depending on the fabric that you use it'll be very obvious to you where to join them for example if these were solid colors that were alternating you know it would be obvious that you would join like solid blue to solid blue and then green would be up here and then add another green etc right but with these prints i mean wow they can be all over the place and that's exactly why i put these little markers, um, these little labels on all of the right sides of my rows so that I don't inadvertently 
flip things around because I have a blue here, I have a blue here, right? So I could inadvertently flip things around and then not create my uh, squares that I want to create my color block squares as I join the rows. So anyway, I have three of the two blocks joined together consecutively and now I need to join this last uh, block and actually see that shows me this needs to go this way, right? Because I want to join a blue to a blue. So yes, I have flipped that. I have flipped this around to show you that point. I'm going to look back at my diagram to confirm this is how it should be joined. But this one is a little bit more obvious because again, I'm joining a blue to a blue. I'm going to come in here and actually I'm going to flip it over so that I have my pins in the right position on the top of the fabric. And so that's why too, labeling them and looking back at the picture is important to me because I'm constantly flipping these over to, you know, so that I can start my sewing at the uh, triangle joining areas, right? I'm going to sew this last section together and then I'll have my long row that has a total of eight half square triangle blocks joined. And, and then after I do that, I'm gonna just go through, do the other eight. We'll have a quick peek of what they look like before I iron and press them and join them together. All right, so all nine of my rows are sewn together. And I just marked, so my ninth row is my upper right-hand corner. I'm gonna start piecing this together. So I'm gonna attach the top of row eight to the bottom of row nine and just keep repeating that going all the way down to row one. And then we will see uh, what this quilt looks like. And again, this is just gonna be one really, really long straight quarter inch seam that we're sewing. Super easy. It's really just the size of it that could give you some trouble. So use your pins, use your clips, whatever tools you use to make sure that you can uh, join your fabrics nicely and create nice, even quarter inch seams, all right? So you can see here, this is how they're gonna be joined. So you see there, there's the top of row nine. The top of row eight is touching the bottom of row nine. So I'm just gonna simply take my row nine, flip it down. I'm gonna flip it down. I'm going to line up my seams and I'm gonna start by lining up the seams, pinning at these two seams first, so that I can, I'm gonna pin at these seams going across first, so I can try to get as good a uh, line up there so that my squares are nice and lined up and neat and square. And then I'll come back and add some more pins between those seams to get everything uh, pinned down nicely for me, all right? Okay, friends, here the quilt top is all pieced together. I really, really love how this turned out. I just, I love these colors together, the blue, the green, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of purple, really, really fun. I really love the way these colors play together. Again, I used two 10 inch layer cakes from Cave Facet. Same uh, collection, just in two colorways. I will link to part one of this video um, in case any of you didn't miss that, if you wanna see the fabrics and see the other half square triangle quilt that I made. But anyway, really quickly, just showing you this here, I will be back with another video showing you the backing that I chose for this and you'll get to see it all quilted and bound. Same thing with the smaller uh, half square triangle quilt that I shared in part one of this video, and then we will have a peek at the pillow that I made with the leftover blocks, all right? As we look a little closer, I'll just let you guys know, um, I will also be releasing several more sewing tutorials, so I might be intermixing them uh, with the upcoming videos to complete this out. We will see, um, but either way, make sure you subscribe to this channel and you have your notifications on so you don't miss anything. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you back here soon. Bye now. Yesterday, there was sun and there was rain.